my name is uh, Bill Kerr. I'm a professor here at Food Science and Technology. Uh, I uh, delve into food processing and food engineering, physical properties of foods. I teach classes here on food processing, uh, food texture measurement, uh, food microscopy, uh, and even uh, beer brewing. What is your academic background? Um, yeah, so I uh, started off at Ohio State University, the Ohio State University up in Columbus, Ohio. I was in food science and nutrition there. Uh, and then by half and chance, uh, wandered out to uh, UC Davis, California, where I got a master's degree in food science and technology. Uh, and then um, at that point, they actually didn't have a PhD in food science. So I ended up in biophysics, doing something completely different from food science, working with frog muscles and lasers and things like that. Uh, and then after that, um, uh, I, I got a postdoc with someone I'd worked with in food science. So then I ended up back in the food science world. What is your research and teaching focus? Okay. Uh, in research, uh, I deal mostly in processing, food processing and engineering kind of stuff. But that that can also mean making stuff and then also evaluating it, like measuring sensory properties. How does it taste? You know, how much snap does it have and things like that. Uh, specifically, I most of the work is in three areas. One is uh, working together with Dr. Pegg. We study shelf life of foods, uh, particularly nuts. You know, what kind of packaging, humidity and temperature affects how fast you're uh, pecans are going to go bad. Uh, that's one area. Another area for me is uh, reclaiming value from stuff we usually throw away. So it could be tomato skins, muscadine skins, uh, peanut skins, pecan shells, things like that. So we've done things from as far as getting pigments out of pecan shells, using the smoke things with, making extruded products with... Um, you know, tomato skin stuff. Uh, Kirby now is one of the graduate students who's working on taking dried muscadine skin and processing it with cacao and making chocolate that has some muscadine in with the chocolate. Um, so it's been that kind of thing, you know, things that otherwise people would throw away. And then another area I'm, I'm starting in is, uh, so I've always had a in addition to processing, I said measuring physical properties is important, like color and um, uh, the texture of foods and things like that. But there are some things that are hard to measure texture of. And uh, one of those is crispness and crunchiness. So I've dabbled in the area of measuring crispness and crunchiness of foods. How do you actually do that? And, you know, how do you measure it? It's, it's not as easy as you might think. And um, one way is to measure like the forces that are produced when you break it. The other way is to measure sound as it's as it's uh, being busted apart, let's say, or crunched on. Um, but then what do you do with all that data? So uh, that's been a, a challenge for a lot of researchers out there. So one of the students now is working with machine learning. So that's uh, looking at different, let's say, types of potato chips, recording sounds from them, and see if something about the you know computer algorithms can be uh, used to figure out what kind of chip, what level of crispness it is just by the sound. And and I kind of got started in that because I knew there was things out there uh, like programs now that can record bird sounds and tell you what kind of bird it is, uh, you know, or I think there's even some work on mosquitoes or there's some crazy work on, um, they were trying to determine from how people coughed, whether or not they had COVID, uh, you know, some crazy stuff like that. So that's another area, you know, that I've been working in lately. So that's enough to keep me busy. So I teach the last food processing class. That's probably the biggest one. So and and that really is focused on how do you make a lot of different types of foods, everything from meat products, brisket, sausages, cheeses, candies, um, peanut butter, you know, all these sorts of things that, you know, and, and how do you make it big scale? And, and we try to do a lot of labs on that. And then the other classes are graduate classes. So I teach food texture analysis. So that kind of goes hand in hand with what I was saying about research. You know, how do you how do you cut something or break it and, and figure out how tough the meat is or you know how crispy the chicken um, is and uh, all that sort of stuff. 
And then I also do one on uh, food micros microscopy and structure. I don't think people have a have an understanding how complicated food is really when you start delving into it. You know, even something as simple as ice cream is pretty complicated once you start getting out the, the electron microscopes and things like that. And, and then also I teach the, the online uh, brewing class and then have a few MFT classes too on food ingredients and um, food processing. What is your favorite food product to make in your food processing classes and why? Well, favorite product in food processing. Well, we like them all. Um, we just made candy and that's of course always great. Uh, except there's a little too much of it now and it's too good. You know, I think maybe beer. Uh, some uh, we do make beer. And the interesting thing about that is there's so many different recipes, uh, the technology of it's really interesting. How do you get sugars out of starch and how do you boil it and how do you get the hot flavor in and all that sort of thing and get the yeast to go and to ferment it. Uh, I think what makes it exciting though is that you, you kind of have to wait, you know, so it's like growing a garden or something, you know, it's like you don't get it right away. You got to wait for the yeast to go and you're, oh, it doesn't seem like it's working. And then it starts to work. Uh, and then after a week or two, you know, something good is there, you hope. So you know, that's probably one of the more interesting ones uh, to do. You've been part of our department for a really long time, since the 90s, correct? Yep. Yeah. So what are some of the changes that you've seen in our department over the almost 30 years that you've been here? Oh, boy. Tough question. Apart from personnel, you see a lot of personnel come and go. Um well, you know, of course, the obvious answer to all this, and probably everyone would say something like this, is what has changed a lot is technology. You know, so when I came here, not too many people really used PowerPoint and Excel that much. And then they learned how to use it. Not too many had their own computers or laptops, for sure. Uh, and then they, so they learned to use some of those tools along the way. And then, you know, somewhere along the way, people got more of their own laptops, and now everyone has their own laptops. Uh, social media really started coming in on its own. Uh, so that's changed the nature of how you do business and online learning, you know, like we're Zooming now, and now we have MFT classes online. Uh, and now it's a whole new era too. It, it's, uh, it is certainly, if it hasn't changed, it's going to change a lot. I just had a discussion with students yesterday about whether or not they go to class and so, well, they don't really have to, you know, if the physics professor gives them homework, they can just go home and watch a YouTube video and maybe learn more about that subject for the day. And you think, oh, wow, that's, <laughs> uh, that's profound. Uh, you know, the changes with the online and social media too, you know, it, as an educator, you have to grapple, you know, what are the advantages of that and what is the downside of that? You know, you, you, it's easy to have a lot of people on the Zoom call and stuff and everything. You lose a lot of the personal personal connection and social interaction and all that stuff and lab exercises. And, uh, you know, and of course, now we're getting into that era. As you probably know, you know, you get software now and you can say, oh, please do a presentation for me on on preserving flowers. Mm -hmm. And blah, 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 within 30 seconds, you got a PowerPoint presentation with notes in pictures of uh, you know that presentation, and you're going to see that more and more on you know research and student papers and you know how do you catch that? Do you want to catch it? You know it's going to be a crazy environment uh, in the next few years. Uh, you know that there's other changes too of societal, but I think that technology. I mean, of course, is the biggest for us. 